today is our last day of school for the semester, so that means it's time for another homeschool update. The last one I did was mid-August, or not mid-August, <laughs> um, mid-October, so about two months ago. Um, I will link that one down there and pop it up there as well, if I remember. Um, so, update number two. Um, I would say this kind of second half of our first semester has gone pretty well. Um, maybe a little more bumpy in some ways. Like, I haven't been as consistent with doing afternoon school with the boys. Specifically, they have done a lot of learning on their own. Um, a lot of like, I'll ask them what they want to learn and they'll go find something. Um, or coding or go watch a documentary, that sort of thing. But I haven't been as directly involved, so that's been a problem. On the other hand, um, in some ways it's gone better. We have a pretty good rhythm down. Um, most things are getting completed. Just kind of naturally, like without a lot of effort to make sure they get completed or playing a lot of catch up. So I would say this half's gone pretty well overall the year. I would say has gone it, it's gone pretty well. Um, I feel like we really have a good I feel like I feel like we're just in a good place with our homeschool this year. Um, earlier this week I put up a video where I did a little evaluating of our semester so far and I I'll dig into kind of some different things over in that video than in this one, but they both kind of go together. So when you're done with this one, be sure to go check that one out as well. So, oh, oh Matthew, um, I, I have struggled to find some language arts for him that I feel like, well, I've been to, honestly, that I feel like is worthwhile. With Elizabeth, we did a lot of um, well-trained mind stuff. And I think that was really good for her. It's not that I don't necessarily think it's good for the boys, they just are really resistant to it. And so it just became a struggle and a fight and one I didn't really enjoy. So we've done some things, some different things and I don't know. I really just wanted something that was kind of a get it done thing. So for Matthew, I ended up choosing Redbird Mathematics or Redbird by, oh, I forgot to look it up, what company it is. It's a public school publisher, like Millen maybe? I don't know. I'll look for it. The link for, for it will be down below. I got it through Homeschool Buyers Co-op. Um, and I really like it. It kind of adjusts to, well, there's two parts, a math and a language arts. I ended up buying both of them. Um, I originally was looking at it for the math. And then I saw their language arts and I liked it pretty well. So I just got both. You can adjust, um, they'll give you a placement test, but then you can also adjust the levels from there. But within it, um, I re I'm liking it pretty well. So for language arts, like it'll start with a topic and kind of start with the parts of it. So right now he's working on verb tenses, I believe, future tense. I think it was the future tense. So they started out with something basic and then they worked on the parts and then they it progresses to writing sentences. And one thing I like about it is that it gives kids the words. Like, here's a bunch of words, now make a sentence out of it. So that they can kind of pick and choose, but they don't have to come up with it entirely on their own. It also means since it's on there that they are practicing copying it correctly. So they're not um, building the muscle memory of incorrectly spelling words. So I like that. Um, so then do sentences and it progresses to writing a paragraph, that kind of thing. So parts to whole approach. And so far I like it pretty well. It is, it's get it done. We don't do it every day. Next semester we'll start doing it every day, but right now I just kind of have him, it depends on the day, honestly. So Redbird math. Oh, and so the math is kind of a similar thing, except it progresses to, um, it sh starts it showing like how it's used in real life. 
and they do some parts with it and then they build a project too we are not there yet with one i got it originally because we're doing beast four this year but it's almost like he's ready for it but not quite so i've slowed down the pace of beast and we're interspersing it with more red bird and we just started this right before thanksgiving so far so good i'll give you an update you know next update probably in february or early march so look for it then if you want if you're interested um coding he he absolutely loves coding and something that i find really he can have a pretty short um tolerance for frustration in general in life but for coding he will work at it and work at it and work at it until he gets it just the way he wants so in some ways sometimes i think oh he's spending too much time playing around with coding in other ways not only is it good for like logical thinking and whatever i really think that's um, good for him to learn to build that frustration layer and it's funny because when i was thinking about it when i was noticing it kind of making sense of it was yeah, my husband's the same way <laughs> sometimes he there are certain things that he just doesn't have a lot of uh, tolerance for frustration with but for coding computer stuff he could work on that for hours which is why he went to school to be a computer engineer <laughs> so it's just funny to see when you see those moments of your kids um of you or your spouse coming out your kids and hour of code is what one thing that he really likes and they just recently did an update so if your kids are a fan of um hour of code they just added some new songs and new games and stuff so check it out we also ended up buying a subscription to tinker they had a 40 percent off sale for cyber monday though it just it was still going on just this week um or the end of last week so it went on for a while but they had it for 40 percent off so we ended up getting a subscription to that for both boys and they are really enjoying playing on tinker as well so for Ben, he's my sixth grader. He is um, almost 12. Like I said with Matthew, we've had some problems finding something that's a good writing program. Um, it's worthwhile and all of that. So this year, we started using this building writing skills from Critical Thinking Company. Now it is not like a writing program itself, but it goes through things like um, vivid verbs and strong adjectives, analogies, um, unnecessary adjectives and adverbs, metaphor assemblies, all of those little things that will make your writing better. And we are actually just doing it orally. And I really like it. Um, I can't say that there's necessarily been a payoff in his writing, but Feel like we're kind of you know sowing the seeds for it and when we do go to do to edit some of his writing i pull up you know i remember i remind him of certain things from here to help him improve it so if you're looking for something kind of like that check out this um but to go along with that we he's been doing nano rimo jr this semester or this like since thanksgiving no, November, early November, we started it. And he's enjoying it pretty well. Um, without going into the details, there's been some challenges specific to him, but he's enjoying it. I've really liked the setup of it. They have um, a workbook that you can either print out. For middle school level, they have um, it on Google Docs, or you can purchase it for $10 from Amazon. And of course, even though the NaNoWriMo is over technically since November, you can use it anytime, of course. So I will link that down below. Um, he's been enjoying it and we're gonna just keep working on it here and there as we intersperse it with some other writing activities. I wanted him to do some Latin this year, but it took me a lot of, well, we tried a couple different things and I was trying to figure out what my purpose really was. Was I looking for him to um, to learn about language structure and such with it? Or was I just wanting to expose him more to 
the root words and that sort of thing. And, and honestly, I've never, I never really came to a firm decision. And I don't even know how to go into all of it, but I never came to a firm decision. So what I decided, at least for now, is um, that I wanted to work on like roots and um, endings, prefixes, those sorts of things. So he has that exposure at least. And then whatever we decide to do, I can take it from there. So I went looking um, for, I wanted to look for an app from Critical Thinking Company because my daughter used the Word Roots book from them and I really like those books. So I just wanted to check out what their app version was. And I came across a different one called Greek Latin, Greek Latin Roots. And so far, I like it really well. Again, I'll link it down there. Um, it's kind of a mastery-based approach, and they, oh, yes, goes through it, selects their meaning, and then goes on. And if nothing else, I will be satisfied that he's done this. Um, I don't know. You know, <laughs> I should probably make this part into another video, but I've just... I've really gone kind of through a transformation of what I really think about homeschooling approaches and such in the past couple of years. And I feel like I'm even more unsure of where I stand now than where I used to stand. <laughs> and I don't know where things like Latin fall into my beliefs on homeschooling now. So we're just taking it as it goes. Now for my daughter, she is in 10th grade. Oh, um, yeah, 10th grade. Um, and she is about to finish the first book of the U.S. History Detective, which is also from Critical Thinking Company. Um, I originally started out the year with using, Crash Course has a curriculum to go along with their videos. They have a U.S. History curriculum and a World History curriculum. And I started out the year with the U.S. history curriculum being kind of the spine of her days. Um, it has like different kinds of readings to go along with it and um, their videos and question, really good questions. And I was really happy with it. And then this was going to be a supplement. Well, she is really liking U.S. history detective. And it shouldn't have surprised me because I didn't... I didn't give it enough thought in this way, but she really enjoys learning um, like the connections in history and how cer why certain things influenced other things. Um, things like um, different perspectives on historical events, those kind of things. And this is exactly what <laughs> your history detective does. There is a world history detective too, I believe. So I just went, I went ahead and got her the second semester book and she will start that. And then we're still using um, Crash Course videos. I don't know if I'm going to continue with the Crash Course curriculum or not. I really like it, but I'm not sure that it's a better use of our time than this plus the other things we're doing. So um, there's some, we're doing some primary source document stuff, um, some great some books, blah, 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 some speeches call, from a book called The World's Greatest Speeches, um, and then a bunch of videos from Great Courses Plus. So second semester, we may just be doing that. Biology is continuing to go well. She will be starting, I forget what book we're using. Um, I'm drawing a blank. I can see it. I'll try to insert a picture here. Um, she she's enjoying the book pretty well, but starting next semester she's going to do a lab genetics lab class from Well Trained Mind Academy. For biology, they offer two lab classes each year. One the first semester is like plants and animals, and the second semester focuses on genetics. And I thought that's what the one she would enjoy more. So we'll do that this semester, and that so that will count for one of her lab classes. Um, towards graduation and 
I'm excited for it. I'm a little nervous just because I don't know. I don't know how tough it's going to be. And she did a lab class last year, but not really. We're not giving her lab credit for chemistry for it. Um, but I don't think her teacher graded as strict. I don't think teacher graded as well and as hard as had the standards that I would have held. And I think their standards are going to be harder. So I don't know what that's going to look like for her. But I'm excited for it. I enjoy genetics, so nothing else would be a more interesting topic to me. But I don't also, I'm not really confident on how much extra work that's going to be. So I don't know how much of the biology textbook we're going to use this semester. Because depending on how much, how much time the lab class takes up, there may not be a lot of time for the text, um, which is fine. We are about where we should be. There are other parts that I want her to do still, so I'll pick out a few parts after I see what the workload's going to be, and then we'll go from there. But I'm happy with um, how those are going. We... What else? Everything else is going well with her math. She's continuing to do ridiculously well. She was so upset recently because she struggled with a math problem on a test and she's just spent a gazillion hours on this test and then she didn't get a hundred. <laughs> so she was very upset that she spent all that time and didn't get a hundred. <laughs> Me as a high school student I would have been like eh I'll just miss that problem. Um, so it's it's good to see that kind of a work ethic out of her because I wasn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have done that when I was in high school. Some of you have been, have heard me mention that we will be possibly moving next year. Um, we have submitted our jobs and we should know by the next time I do an update, I should have an answer as, well as to whether we are moving or if we're staying here. <laughs> That's, we're, we're trying to stay here, but we'll see. And if we are moving, that's going to it's going to change what next semester looks like. Go check out the video on the screen for kind of a different evaluation of our homeschool year and to grab the evaluation pack for yourself. I'll see you over there.